In his first inaugural address, President Ronald Reagan declared in the second paragraph, and let me remind you that the states formed the federal government and not the other way around. In Reagan's view, the federal government had become so heavy-handed, so commandeering, so authoritarian over the states that the American people needed a little history lesson and an indication of just where this then brand new president stood. Well, Reagan was right. The 13 colonies that fought the revolution and won the revolution and wrote the Constitution all preceded the federal government. They voluntarily associated with each other in order to form it. In one moment of victory from England, the colonies became states. The states were sovereign. They were nation states. They were as independent of each other as they were from England after the revolution. They had their own governments, their own militias, their own courts, their own representatives to the other states. Fast forward to today. Our founding fathers are turning in their graves as, as to where America is, such a far cry from what they envisioned. So how can we bring it back? How can we bring America, how can we bring the federal government into the confines of the Constitution? Or as my next guest so eloquently states, it's time to part company. Here now is Walter Williams, professor of economics at George Mason University and a regular on Freedom Watch. So, Professor Williams, I'm going to use yeah. your phrase, I loved it, even though I didn't have any gray hair until I sat in the family court <laughs> in New Jersey. Is it time for a divorce? Well, uh, maybe so. I, I think that uh, the, our differences uh, between various groups of Americans are becoming irreconcilable. That is, there's one group of Americans who wish to forcibly impose their vision on the rest of us, and there's another group of Americans who just want to be left alone. And so the question I asked in that particular column that you're referring to is that, that uh, should, we, should we be forced to fight one another to get our way. That is, should uh, liberty-oriented people be forced to fight with uh, uh, people who prefer tyranny? I say no. I think that we should part company. We should get a divorce, just like uh, a, a married couple uh, who aren't getting along. One person disobeys all the vows or just breaks all the vows. Well, should they stay together and fight, in, or, and, or should they become separated? In, in a recent conversation on Freedom Watch, which uh, we had with uh, Professor Kirkpatrick Sale, who's with whose work I'm going to guess you are familiar. Yeah. Uh, he articulates that Vermont is a good place for this to start. It's a small, out-of-the-way state with a culture very different from Washington and mm -hmm. from uh, the lower 49. And if its legislature and at a, at a referendum in an overwhelming number, the people voted to secede from the union, it might actually get some sympathy from people throughout the rest of the country who agree with what you just said. That, that is absolutely right. And matter of fact, there's a young group of people in the state of New Hampshire right next to Vermont. They call themselves freestateproject.org, and they're trying to get uh, about 20,000 Americans to move to the state of New Hampshire, right. peaceably take over the, uh, the political system, you know, peaceably by voting, and then negotiate with Congress to obey the United States Constitution. And some of them, it's not official policy of uh, freestateproject.org, but some of the members say if Congress does not obey the, the, uh, the Constitution, we'll then issue a unilateral declaration of uh, independence, just as our founders did in 1776. I have to tell you that I was a privileged to speak to the Free State uh, Project in Nashua, New Hampshire, uh -huh, uh, yeah. not too long ago, and I drove up from Boston. So I went from one of the most heavily regulated, micromanaged states in the world, the People's Republic of Massachusetts, to a place where freedom reigns in New Hampshire. Uh -huh. I arrived at the hotel, and the first thing they said to me was, do you want to wear a gun? I said, what do you mean do I want to wear a gun? The guy said to me, you're here. You're in the free state of New Hampshire. You can lawfully wear and carry a gun. I didn't want it. I didn't need it. But I was astounded coming from New Jersey, where I live, That's from it. Boston, where I had just been, at the level of freedom that already exists in this state. That's Why do I tell you this right. story? I tell you this story because there are people and pockets of people in this country who agree with you. They're not in Washington, but they're all over the place yeah. outside of Washington. And, you know, one, what, uh, Judge, you know, one of the ma r rather remarkable things that you said, that you traveled from Massachusetts to uh, New Hampshire, and, and you called the, you know, the, the uh, People's Republic of Massachusetts, but do you realize that Massachusetts, at the founding of our country, contained some of the most liberty-oriented men? Yes. 
Yes, yeah, Sam Adams and his buddies and, and, would and, wish and, that their graves could be moved out of Massachusetts <laughs> if they could have known what the government would be like today. That is absolutely right. And, and a lot of people don't realize this whole, this whole issue about uh, parting company or secession, that if in, in, in 1787, when they were debating the Constitution, if states did not uh, believe that they, they could secede, the Constitution would have never been ratified. Right. That is, in the state of Virginia, in its constitutional meetings, as well as Rhode Island, and I believe New York as well, they explicitly say that if the government, if the federal government becomes abusive of the powers that we have delegated to them as, as principles, then we have the right to resume those problems. You know, those, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing that those resolutions uh, were freely negotiated for contracts between the states joining the union and the federal government. Texas has negotiated at the time for the right to split into five states. Could you imagine 10 senators coming from Texas instead of two? The folks that run the Congress would have a heart attack. Right. And, and I think when you argue with people, people say, well, the, no states have a right to secede. Well, we have to recognize that, as you mentioned, that the end of the war between the, the states and Britain, there was a Treaty of Paris and states States were became sovereign nations, right. and and so states came together in in 1787 as principles, and they made the federal government their agent. Correct. And principles have the right to fire agents. Absolutely. As as well, uh, Professor Williams, when the Supreme Court looked at the idea of secession after the Civil War, it said in a case not involving secession, so the language is, as you know, what lawyers call dicta, sort of a statement yep. the court made that wasn't directly germane to its finding. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. it said, well, leaving the union would be sort of like amending the Constitution. So certainly a state could leave if enough, if enough of the other states, probably three quarters, what it would take to amend the Constitution mm -hmm. agreed with it. Yep. So even after the Civil War, in the highest echelons of big government, in the progressive era, when yep. the feds were beginning to control and regulate everything under the sun, the Supreme Court, in a majority opinion, recognized the power, ability, moral, and lawful authority mm -hmm. of the states to secede from the Union. Yep. But, you know, at, at the end of the bottom line, what I would like to see, and, when, and it looks like it's getting dimmer and dimmer, I would like to see the American people. I would like to see us to be able to convince the most of the American people that Congress is behaving unconstitutionally and get the average American to love liberty and love our Constitution. I think most people, when asked if they would prefer to have their lives micromanaged by the federal government or if they would prefer to be left alone, would clearly articulate, I'd rather be left alone. That's right. Absolutely right. Professor Williams, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us and on Freedom you. Watch. Goodbye. Thank you. You can catch today's show on foxnews.com slash Freedom Watch and on Sirius 145 XM 168 or online at foxnewstalk.com at 6 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays. From New York, defending freedom. Until the next time, stay free, America.